When you connect to a data source in Power BI to create a semantic model, you can do this in different ways. You can connect by using import storage mode, where you're going to take a copy of the data, load it in memory, and because you've taken a copy and you've loaded it in memory, the performance is quite good. However, you might not necessarily want to create a copy of your data. So in that case, you might want to use direct query storage mode, which is only supported for certain data sources, like, for example, an Azure SQL database. Here, you are not taking a copy of the data because, as the name suggests, you're querying that data at the source. However, it's not very performant. In Fabric, you can now use a third storage mode called Direct Lake. As the name suggests, you are connecting directly to files that are stored in one lake. These are Parquet formatted files, specifically Delta tables, which are stored in a Fabric lake house or warehouse. So in this case, because you're connecting directly to these files, you are not taking a copy of your data, like Direct Query, but the performance is much better because of the technology that Direct Lake uses. So Direct Lake is generally preferred over Direct Query for this reason. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at a very simple example of creating a Direct Lake model and creating a report off of it. We're going to look at this for both creating the model in Fabric and creating the model in Tabular Editor. We'll start by looking at a lake house. So right now what we're looking at is we are looking at a lake house where we have a number of different delta tables and we want to create a new semantic model for our customer table alone. So we're going to create a very simple table based off of our customers. So we will then create a new semantic model, call it customer, and we will call this direct lake fabric. We're going to publish this to our workspace that already has fabric git integration enabled, and we'll see what happens. So in the meantime, what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, we see that it has already appeared. We're going to create a direct lake model in tabular editor. So we've seen how to create one in the lake house user interface. It's very easy, but it's also very easy to create in tabular editor. You can just specify a new model. You want to uncheck workspace database because you don't yet want to connect to the Power BI service to a workspace. So we're going to call this direct lake tabular editor. And we're going to then import some tables. We will import the using the Fabric One Lake Direct Lake connector. So this is supported by the user interface of Tabular Editor 3. I'm going to add the SQL endpoint, which was already copied in preparation for this demo. And then we're going to select the table that we're interested in, our customer table. So we can also preview it. We can select the columns we want and everything all within Tabular Editor as well. So we've now got our table schema. We can create a measure even if we want, like number of customers which will just be a simple count rows for the customer table. We've created a very, very simple, the most simple direct lake model we can, and we're now going to deploy this to our Fabric workspace. We go model, deploy, and then we follow the deployment wizard. We already have the workspace here that we're going to deploy to, Team 3 development, where we already have our Fabric direct lake model deployed. We'll go ahead and continue. So we'll call this just Direct Lake Tabular Editor 3. And then we will proceed with our deployment. So we're now, we've created a very, very simple Direct Lake model in Tabular Editor. We've also created one in Fabric. And we have deployed these models into a separate workspace, which is on our Fabric capacity. Once Tabular Editor is done deploying this model, we go over to our workspace. And we can see two things. So first of all, we see our models. Both of them have been deployed. But interestingly, this workspace has Fabric Git integration enabled. But we see that if we create the Direct Lake model by using Fabric, it's not supported for Git integration. But if we create it with Tabular Editor, it is. That is an important consideration to keep in mind, at least during the preview stage. So what we want to now do is we want to refresh our models. We don't really have to do this. We only actually have to do it with the one that's been deployed through the XMLA endpoint. And we now want to create a report off of it. We're going to use this one as we proceed because we created our measure in this one. We're going to just add a very simple measure a card to see how many customers we have, 2,497. So we have this many customers, but we know for a fact that we have uh, certain areas and regions that we're not supposed to have. So for instance, 
we have the area under dark. So, and we are not supposed to have these customers. So we're going to get rid of those customers by modifying our data. We have here a fabric notebook, which we're going to use to do some data transformations and then write changes to our lake house. What we're going to do is we're going to make some changes specifically to our customer table, where we're going to drop all of the customers that are in the area north or under dark, because we've decided that those customers should not be in our customers table for whatever reason. So we'll see how quick this goes, because if we comment out this line, or we you know, comment in that line rather, so we now can run this code block here, uh, which will then write those changes to our lake house. So in seven seconds, it's done. We now simply can go back to our workspace uh, we'll refresh it here and refresh the model. And it's already done refreshing. We can refresh our report and we can see that the data is already updated. So we have dramatically less customers. We can also see that those areas have disappeared from the table. So it can be very useful using direct lake mode. You can see those changes imminently. We didn't have to load the data in memory. We didn't have to wait for the data refresh to perform. We didn't have to do any power query because all those transformations have been pushed upstream to our notebook. Uh, of course, we need, need to manage our notebooks. We need to have good practices for writing code in the notebooks and having a good life cycle and all of this. But the direct lake storage mode is a very important thing to keep in mind. It can be very powerful when used correctly. However, it does bring new considerations for performance and optimization because optimizing a direct lake model is very different from optimizing a direct query or an import model because you are using these delta tables. So you have to do things like vacuuming and optimizing those tables. You also have to take into consideration the direct lake fallback mode because if your DAX queries are not performant, you normally have direct lake. But if your DAX queries are not performant, let's say this is not performant, then it will fall back to direct query. And you'll end up with the poor performance of direct query. So it's important then to make sure that uh, you manage that fallback behavior so that you can optimize your DAX to make sure that you're not going to have that fallback issue. Because if you disable fallback, which you can do, you can disable fallback, that's going to just simply result in your query failing. So it will just fail, and you'll just have an error which of course will make users upset. So to summarize, you can use Direct Lake. It's a new storage mode for your semantic models where you connect to these Parquet formatted files, Delta files, Delta tables rather, uh, stored in one lake in a lake house or a warehouse. Um, and you can create a Direct Lake model in Fabric from the lake house user experience for user interface. You can also create it in Tabular Editor. If you do create it uh, in Tabular Editor, it will also support Git integration. If you deploy it from Tabular Editor to a workspace that's connected uh, to a remote Git repository with Fabric Git integration, uh, and you can also control the case sensitivity of your model by adjusting the collation. Um, and you can, of course, then continue to manage your Tabular model using Tabular Editor from there. Uh, and yeah, so Direct Lake can be very interesting. This is just a very simple demonstration of how it can work.